good evening from the edge so we actually didn't get to do too much video recording while we're at disney we're too busy running around doing our thing um so we actually didn't record much video so we wanted to come back and um talk about our highlights of the trip um so we're gonna do this in sections so the video doesn't get too long um so day one day one was January 17th, 2020. We did not plan it that way, but that was the day the Rise of the Resistance opened at Disneyland. So, like I said, we didn't plan it that way, and we actually were kind of stressing about it, was thinking the park was going to be crazy busy, yeah. and that we won't even get into the park, because I know during like the holiday season they hit capacity twice. And we were just afraid that we weren't even going to get in. If we were going to get in, we just wouldn't be able to move or do anything we wanted to do. So we arrived at like 6.30 in the morning. We Well, maybe 7. Yeah. We had gotten up at 6, got ready, and left the hotel about like 6.15ish. And we decided to hit um, the local Denny's, which was right next to our hotel. For breakfast um our hotel did provide breakfast but they didn't start until seven and like with the craziness of the new ride we didn't want to wait that long yeah. so we made our way into the park that was thinking security was going to be crazy busy we went through security and through the front entrance of the park within five minutes yeah um that was easy yeah, it was, it, was, it was a breeze. We stressed for no reason, really. We went to City Hall, got my birthday button. For those of you who don't know, this was a birthday trip. My birthday was the following day on the 18th. Got my birthday button, and then we made our way to Main Street um, for the rope drop. That place was crowded. That was crowded. That was crazy. Um, we had a pretty good position um, right in front of Frontierland. Uh, for those of you who are not oh, familiar with the placement of Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, it kind of sits between Frontier, the, the uh, behind Frontierland, and then the other entrance is um, near the Hungry Bears restaurant in Critter Country by Splash Mountain. So it kind of sits in the far corner of the park. So we got a spot fairly close to the Frontierland gates. They dropped the rope. We made our way in. That was about 7.45ish. Um, we went straight towards Galaxy's Edge. Um, and I was, should mention that um, Rise of the Resistance, they were using uh, uh, virtual queue only. So uh, you could get boarding passes on either the Disneyland app, which we'll actually be covering in a different video. Or you could go to a guest relations in the park. So we made our way to Galaxy's Edge. Knowing that you couldn't get on Rise of Resistance without a boarding pass, we went straight towards the other ride, which is Smuggler's Run. Sm Smuggler's Run. Yeah. Smuggler's Run. We got the Smuggler's Run. It still hadn't hit the 8 o'clock mark when the boarding passes were going to be available. We walked through the queue of Smuggler's Run and realized... It was still five minutes before the boarding passes opened for Rise of the Resistance. So we stepped aside because we didn't want to be on the ride uh, when the boarding passes opened. So we stepped aside, waited. When the boarding passes came up online, uh, we hit the app as soon as we could. We got boarding group 93. So only boarding groups 1 through 82 are guaranteed access to the ride that day. If you're above that, it's only if they can accommodate more. That's if the um, ride doesn't break down. So we got 82, so we went in with the whole, or 83, we went in with the whole mindset we may or may not get on the ride. So we just continued about our day. Got on the smuggler's run. That was amazing. And then we made our way to Splash Mountain, where I rode. Russ did not. Yeah. He doesn't like large drops. And, of course, you Disney fans are well aware of how Splash Mountain drops. 
So we did Splash Mountain. We did the Winnie the Pooh ride. And then we made our way over to Indiana Jones. And that's probably the ride we waited the most in line for. And it was still only like a 35 minute wait. Um, so we waited on that, went on that ride. And then did we go to Thunder Mountain right away? Shortly after that. Yeah, we waited our way over to Thunder Mountain. That was basically a, almost a walk on. Yeah. It was maybe a five, 10 minute wait. Um, that's actually one of our favorite rides. So we went over there and then I had fast passes for Space Mountain. So we made our way over to Tomorrowland. We still had some quite a bit of time. We wanted to go at Russ on Star Tours. Um, I personally can't really do Star Tours. It makes me sick. Um, so we were going to get him on Star Tours, but it was so crowded over there. Russ said, you know what? We went on Smuggler's Run. It's kind of like Star Tours with a new twist. Um, spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Um, so then we went over to Autotopia mm -hmm. and did that while we was wasted time for my Fast Pass. Russ hung out, um, just sat down, played on his phone while I did uh, Space Mountain. And then we went over to another personal favorite of ours, which we also had Fast Passes for, which is... Radiator Springs? No, that's the next day. Oh. What's mountains in the middle of Disneyland with the snow on it? Oh, the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn. <laughs> A lot of people actually don't like that ride, but we love it. So we did the Matterhorn, and then we decided after that it was time to find some characters. So we went to Toontown, we found Mickey and Minnie, and we found Pluto and Goofy. And then while we were there, we decided to jump on uh, Roger Rabbit. And that was only like a 20 minute wait. Yeah. Um, for you, those of you who are not familiar with the Disney Corporation, Roger Rabbit is kind of a, it's a family ride. It's more on the kiddie side, but it always has a long line. No. regardless like we even saw wait times for that up to 50 minutes so we went on that and then we decided it was lunchtime so we made our way over to the hungry bears restaurant we're located in critter country and we will be doing that on a separate post but we had an amazing lunch it was good it was really good and fairly good price for theme park food and then after that, since we're already in Critter Country, we decided to uh, meet Tigger and Pooh Bear. Mm -hmm. And then after that, what did we do after that? Oh, we went, then we went met Moana. Mm -hmm. And then we went to one of Russ's favorite rides, which is Astro Blasters, which he always beats me in those kind of games, but they're still fun anyway. Mm -hmm. And then after that, Russ decided he had enough. It was enough uh, crowds for him. Um, so he decided to go back to the room for a little bit. We literally stayed like a five minute walk from the main gate. And I continued on by myself. I went and found Tiana, who was actually at the main gate. And then I went on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which Russ has still yet to do. He hasn't done it yet. And then I decided to brave it and go on Thunder Mountain again. And, you know, I just waited. It was a 35 minute, 45 minute wait. And then I ended up texting Russ saying, hey, they're getting close to our boarding for Rise of the Resistance. If you want to go on it, you might want to make your way back. Well, great minds think alike. He was already on his way back. Oh, by the way, we actually did do Smuggler's Run twice. Yeah. That was before he decided it was enough for the day. We did Smuggler's Run, and then we did um, uh, a live video for a Facebook group that we were in, uh, H2C Ohana. Um, showed them around Galaxy's Edge a little bit. So Russ got back into the park. And we made our way over to the Rise of the Resistance. We still had about 
six, seven numbers to go through before our boarding was arriving. But, um, so when you actually get your boarding group and you get close and they actually call you up, they will text you on the app. Um, so we made it, and you, then you have two hours to redeem your pass. So we made our way over there. By the time we got over there, they were on 81, or 91, 91. They're on 91 and we were 93, so we just kind of hung out. And within five, 10 minutes, they were calling us up. So, Rise of the Resistance was amazing. And we will actually do that on a separate blog because we don't want to do any spoilers and everything. So we'll do that later. We'll do a whole spoiler alert thing later. Um, so to stay tuned for that. And then after that, we decided, even though the park was still open for a couple hours, because at this point it was like 8 o'clock, 8.30, um, we, we had enough for the day. We were tired. We were sore. So we made our way back to our hotel. And luckily our hotel had a rooftop deck. So we still got to see the fireworks. And even though we didn't have the music choreographed with it, I actually think we had a better view of the fireworks than you would have in the park. They seemed closer. For they seemed time. closer. And they were, yeah, it was a lot of clearer view because we're up on the rooftop above basically above the park, but across the street. So that was our first day at Disneyland for my birthday. That was January 17th, 2020. So we will be doing a second video for our second day. So for now, that's all. Russ, do you have anything to add? No. No? So that's all for now. So. Good night from the edge and we will see you again soon.